Hey everyone, Paul here and in this tutorial I'm going to take you through some methods that I liked to use to create sort of uh, ink and outline effects in Blender and take a look at some, uh, some methods that are out there for doing inks and outlines and uh, the, the engines you can use in Blender and how to combine them. Let's get started. There are a few options when it comes to creating outlines in Blender. Now, by far the most popular method and easiest to access would be freestyle, but I'm going to cover a few more um, along the way. Now, freestyle is built right into Blender. It can be enabled via the Renders Property tab, and once enabled, you can access all of freestyle settings in the View Layers Property tab. It provides a wide range of options for producing line work, and you can literally spend hours creating and tweaking line work settings until you get them just right. Now, Freestyle will render in both Cycles and Eevee, although the main advantage for me um, of rendering in Cycles is that you can disable everything except Freestyle to get a clean line pass. Now, this is impossible with Eevee. Um, however, there is a couple of workarounds. Of course, there are a couple of drawbacks. Freestyle is a post process. So you won't be able to preview uh, all your settings in your viewport while you're working. It only works at render time. So it can take a little bit of backwards and forwards testing and retesting, re-rendering to get all of the effects right. Now furthermore, when it comes to animation, it sometimes tends to glitch a little. So you, you know, you're running an animation and you'll see that line work will break up unexpectedly in a few frames or you'll get a few uh, lines sort of jumping and, and, and that sort of thing. For clean, uh, crisp animation, this isn't the best solution. Um, and you know, you basically have to retweak the settings to really minimize the impact on that. Now, beyond freestyle, there are a few other methods. Now, one other popular one that people like to use is known as the inverted hull method. The way it works is that it uses a material to color the outlines and then a solidify modifier with a few special settings uh, to set up those outlines. But you also have to do one other thing and that is enable backface culling on the object that you're trying to outline. Now, setting up is simple enough, but it can be a bit time consuming and you normally have to add it to everything you would like outlined. And this can be a bit of a pain as you're going through object, setup, object, setup. However, someone did create a free add-on which simplifies the process. Now, if you download this add-on from this Gumroad page uh, and uh, enable it in your Blender add-on settings, this takes the legwork out of that. And what's more, it allows you to apply this to several objects at once. It also allows you to edit several outlines at once and so on. So it's an extremely useful feature. It basically does all of those steps in one hit and then it gives you a handy tab to go and edit those settings on the fly. It renders really fast too and it will work in both Cycles and Eevee. There are, of course, some drawbacks. And the main one I encountered was that it only works on manifold meshes with their normals pointing outwards. Uh, this is problematic if you're trying to get some edges in a room, say, that you've cut out the fourth wall in and you want to get some edges on the, the floor and wall joints, okay? It's not going to put them there. It's actually going to put them on the outside of the room because there is a hole in that mesh. It doesn't really work on text and curve objects, even though you can add this method to text and curve objects because they have their own solidify modifier um, modifiers in their stacks. Because curve modifier stacks are different to mesh modifier stacks as well as text ones, again, um, this is pretty much designed uh, to work just on meshes. Now, another way that I've uh, enjoyed adding outlines, and it, it works for very specific things, like you want to outline an object or an area or that sort of stuff, is straight through the compositing node. Now, this is another post process. So once you've created your image, uh, you can go ahead and um, use your compositor to set up these outlines. You can generate separate mats and then use um, the Dilate Erode node as the basis for creating some really cool outline effects. 
Now, there is another method that isn't in the main branch of Blender, but that the NPR community likes to talk about a lot, and it is called LAN PR. Now, what this is, is uh, something that has been developed by a uh, Blender developer called Yiming Wu, uh, and he's basically creating a uh, real-time alternative to freestyle that works uh, pretty well. Unfortunately, I've had to dig around for a link to his page because just Googling LAN PR or Yiming Wu doesn't really um, <laughs> give you the, the results for basically a, you know, a download to unpack and, and run. Uh, and so I provided the link uh, in the show notes for this video uh, so that you can find it and test it yourself. Now, I've had a bit of a play with the latest version and I have to say after a little work to sort of figure out the logic behind it, it was pretty easy to set up it previews inside your viewport and renders amazingly fast. There is a whole range of options on how to split up your line work using LANPR uh, and provided you know what you're doing, you can achieve some stunning results in a single render pass. Now, the drawbacks, the main one, is that you have to be willing to go a bit experimental. Okay, now experimental branches of Blender are not the official release. You have to know this from the start. So, you know, you have to expect crashes, you have to expect lag, you have to expect some things to go wrong, and it would not be recommended in a production environment. That said, this build seemed to be pretty rock solid on my Windows 10 64-bit architecture. Previewing an animation in real time will tend to flicker, and so you're not seeing a you know one-to-one -one real time thing, but it is as close to real time as you can get, and this is one big advantage over Freestyle. It also renders using its own LAN PR engine, so you will see that added to your list, which includes Cycles, Eevee, Workbench, you now have LAN PR. Now, unfortunately, this means that it will disregard uh, all uh, other materials and everything and just give you a straight LAN PR line work pass. Now, the workaround for getting this composited over any color is the same as the workaround for Eevee, which means you have to utilize linked scenes, especially for animations, where you have to render all your color information in one scene and then do like a LAN PR uh, scene render on another and then use your compositor to stitch those two together at render time. And it renders approximately in a third of the time that Freestyle does. Now your mileage may vary. Uh, this is the test that I did with this particular scene on my architecture, but it is still noticeably faster. Finally, the last drawback for LANPR is that the documentation is a little sketchy. When you Google, you will see a lot of great renders. You'll see a lot of great example files. You'll see a lot of people saying, did this with LANPR, it rocks, it's gonna kill freestyle, blah, blah, blah. But you won't see a lot of stuff that says, here's how I take you through the settings for LANPR, possibly because it is still being developed and improvements are coming out all the time. There is a little bit of documentation on the website, but again, it reads very much much like the, um, the Blender Wiki or something like that. That said, I found the glitching to be almost non-existent on a render. So, you know, this is very promising. Um, I'm hoping that LANPR does uh, develop to, to, to be a really great tool. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing what is in store for LANPR in the future. So I hope you got a lot out of this tutorial. As always, if you like what you see here, uh, do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, and if you're feeling at all generous, you can join the ranks of my Patreon supporters. It's their support over at Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Of course, all of the working files are downloadable through a link in the show notes. Uh, so go ahead and click on that link, download the file, and take a look at what we've been covering in today's tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.